Oh, come on. Oh, that, that should have counted. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about, like, just the Forgotten Worlds as, like, a world, I, I guess? I like the concept, I mean, the levels of Zolt don't look, wouldn't look too out of place in Avalar, but... Yeah. As a concept, I do like this idea of, basically, realms without dragons. Yeah. Of course, Avalar has no dragons, which raises a whole lot of questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's just, like... It's just like, um, the Forgotten Worlds is just, uh, basically says what it needs to, um, a, a, a world where, dra dra where dragons used to live, but they went somewhere else eventually, and, and just became forgotten, I guess, over time. But, what am I actually doing? I don't even know. <laughs> yes, game seems to imply that dragons are the ones who basically create all the magic in the world. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I'm not even sure that's true, because we have creatures like Nasty Nork. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the dragons that have some ooh, magic properties to them, I guess. It's not really explained too much, but... Alright, I'm missing one. Oh, this is a weird angle, I don't like that. Sparks is grand as good as ever. Yeah, it gets even better later on. There we go. Daisy! You're in Smash now! Alright, so, um, this is a, you have to do this to get a, um, a skill point, um, and you have to do this for basically every, every skateboard sequence, um, where you're gonna have to, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna have to, um, what's it, ah, oh, dang it, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do, do four, because it gets you ridiculous amounts of points. There we go, get Crush. Ah. Yeah. yeah, there's like funny little names like that. There's you can do like the a raging Ripto or a nasty Nork. <laughs> that sounds that does sound like a the last one does sound like an actual skateboard move. Technique. Yeah. They should call it gnarly Nork. Yeah. Uh but yeah, like uh, I think every skateboard sequence has some kind of skill point. With the exception of like the last one you do, um, and the Rash Master. Yeah, and they are pretty uh, strict. You have to do a lot of advanced techniques if you want to really have a chance in getting the skill points. Um, that being said, there's um, actually no. I, I I'll just restart because this is terrible. <laughs> uh, but there's actually no. No skill points in the speed ways to speak of, uh, like the like how you had to um, get enough um, get beat the speed ways in time, like in the second game. That's not a thing in this one, so I kind of want to say that the skateboards, these skateboard sequences, kind of replaced them in a loose sense. It's the closest you're probably gonna get. Yeah. This might take a bit. How many points do you need again? Uh, I'm not sure, but it... <laughs> um, it, when, when you get enough points, it'll, it'll just give you the skill point. You don't have to wait until it ends. And this should be good. 
Oh, come oh. on. I, I, thought, I thought I landed that. Yeah, I agree. Okay. It's really hard to make it so you get enough height to get four uh, spins. But yeah, this is... They don't actually tell you about the trick system until, like, the second skateboard sequence. So... Yeah, you don't... You're new to this, you're probably backtracking. Yeah. Like, if this is your first time playing the game, you'll probably be like, Okay, I got the eggs, let's move out. <laughs> I'm usually better at this, though. I'm not... Let's play Curse. Yeah, I guess. Ah, oh, dang it. I'm really trying to get a crush, or uh, whatever the... I think it's crushing gold. You're making me crave soda right now. Yeah. Uh, well, if you get um, th there's a there's a course that makes it a makes it so you're able to um do even more than four than four spins, and I think they call it like orange crush or something like that. There we go. Nope. And crush. There we go. Cool. So right off the bat we have a bunch of points. And you have to be creative. You can't just keep using the same tricks over and over because um, they, I guess, stale for lack of a better word. Um, dang it. Ooh. Like if you do like the same trick twice, um, You'll get less points at, for it the second time, so be careful. Nice. Oh, nice, we got it, cool. Now we just had to wait for the timer to go out. Whee! I mean, we got. I, I, I guess you can just give up, but. Let's just see how much, how many points we can rack up. Did have you ever played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? Uh, I not the not Tony Hawk's Pro Skater specifically. I played like a BMX game, which is like the closest I've gotten. Oh, you played BMX X X X. Okay, I got you. The the one that Kid Icarus uh, did, uh, Cad Icarus. Was, it, was the one that they get people? <laughs> <laughs> it was it. I remember having a lot of fun with that game. I kid you not, there is a BMX game where everyone's naked. <laughs> what? I Why? Mean, because of because of 2000s. <laughs> look it up, or when I mean look it up, I mean don't look it up. <laughs> wow. And yeah, there we go. But if you want to know like what what you're aiming for, just beat the course record. And I think we got all the gems here. So, let's go. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, the levels are probably small because they don't have to. Because they're just kind of. You're right, the levels are probably small because they cordoned off all of the mini game sections. Yeah. I'm okay with this, honestly. Still point resetting aside. Yeah. Oh, also another, another, oh, I guess we didn't pick these up, uh, another little just general store, uh, story thing that I was asking, asking for to be inspired to is that, um, the, the main, the main plot actually has an effect on the, on the, on the levels and the, in the characters and stuff, whereas, like, um, the sorceress sends out her Rhinox, which are her minions, 
into the levels and just cause ha general havoc and stuff. Um, whereas in like the second game, it was just like Avalar was just kind of killing itself. <laughs> yeah. So it's just little things like that. Again, I'm I'm not asking for much. It's just like make make it ah. yeah, just make it so like the 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 villain actually feels like a villain and not like just some kind of bystander that just uh is is just kind of there and being a minor nuisance, which is what Ripto feels like to be. You're quite honest. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I went. Wanna... I was going to say, I mentioned something about the lore earlier, I just, I do like how there's, like, it's just a little, th it's kind of a little thing, but it, it, I do appreciate it that they had, that they had basically the magic being drained from the world to the spirals, after yeah. basically bringing everything, every, everyone together again. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That is some knockback. Hello there. Yeah, this is a little secret. Um, it takes a little bit to, it, it, I can see that, like, taking a bit to find on your first run. Because he, like, even, uh, the last playthrough I did of this game was actually pretty recently. Um, it was for the Sea Spring run, and, um, the first take I had, uh, I took a while finding that area, so. If you want to use this as some kind of guide, there you go, I guess. <laughs> it's implied in the... I mean, that's a good question. These Rhinox, are they... Uh, I always thought of them as golems. That they were created by created from the gems themselves, like Nazi Norks minions. Mm. Work. I mean... Uh... Nas oh, okay, I don't want to die here. Uh, Na Nasi Nork um, created the uh, the minions from the gems, and considering like considering like the sorceress is like well, sorceress and all that, um, I I don't think it's too far fetched to to assume she can do the same thing. It does lead to some very odd, uh, at least some further questioning when you get to the boss cutscenes, though. That is true, I guess. Like these, like if they are like just magic creatures created from the gems themselves, they have a lot. They just seem to have their own personal feelings. Yeah. And like, <laughs> and then they just well get double transformed because uh, they get transformed in spoilers bosses later. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I appreciate them bringing back the gem thing from a gameplay standpoint, but yeah. They make it a, it's a bit, a little bit weird to think about, uh, in terms of like actual law, I guess. Yeah, you can tell she's a girl because she's pink. Yeah. Oh, also, this game kind of, kind of, um, has, um, a, like little story twists with the uh, side quest. There's a, they. Oh, we're missing five gems somewhere. Uh, that is unfortunate. Um, but like, the, the they'll be like, okay, the uh, the the character the characters want you to sit, want you to find and save like this this character, and then when you find them, they're like, oh, <laughs> the, these guys told you to find me. Oh, I got a restraining order on them. And it's just like a lot a fun little twist, I guess. And uh, there's one other, there's another thing like that later on, I think in the third homeworld. Or the third set of levels, rather. I really don't know where I'm... Yeah. I really don't want to have to miss a gem this early on. There is a... Uh... You, there is a, tri a a cheat to activate the treasure finder. Ah, there's him. Oh. One of them. Oh, there's oh, there just... they are. Okay. Draw distance. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough.
Oh, I got another cutscene. Cut scene. Yeah, these just activate depending on how many eggs you have, I think. Ah, <laughs> oh, these are gonna be fun to see in HD. It's the scary sorceress. I've warned you already. This place isn't safe for small dragons and pussy cats. Mm -hmm. Thanks, but I think we can look after ourselves. Try looking after this. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Come back when you finish witch school, okay? Say, is it just me? Or is she kind of cute when she's angry? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I used to think Yaku was like some evil version of Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, I mean, she has a similar getup, I guess. <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, what was I gonna say? Spyro uh, takes no gods, takes no shenanigans for anyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um. One thing that, um. Sp Spyro in uh, the second game, um. For the most part, kind of. They, they don't really use his, like, snarky kind of personality as much as the first game did. And they don't. They never reach the level of the first game here either. I think they do it um, a bit more than with the second game. So I appreciate that at least. Because it, it helps with the first game, um, the way the cutscenes worked with saving the dragons, um, that Sparrow uh, like, you, like, talked to the dragons a lot of the time. Whereas the second game, uh, that's only reserved for like, the specific cutscenes. And like all the and Sparrow doesn't actually talk to the NPCs. Uh, they they are the like the only ones talking in the levels. So yeah. And, and then and then you get uh, Hero's Tale, where it's like, it's like it's probably like like from what I, from what I remember seeing of the cutscenes, like Sparrow's like um, I don't want to say a jerk, but. A wise ass. Yeah, he he's he's uh, like a wise crack, at whatever the saying is, but especially compared to the uh, the trilogy in Sparrow Four, I guess. I suppose that's the secret of the mascot with attitude trend. A lot of the mascots weren't that weren't all that edgy. Yeah. Yeah, we already know this. Zoe's just basically a navi. More or less. I appreciate the, the save points, but we already know all this. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice level. Nice. Um. Um. Design. Like with clouds and stuff. Very pastel. Yeah. I'm wondering how those uh, NPCs will look in HD, because... Yeah. I don't really know what they are. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the... I think the they're, like, monks or whatever. The, the guys in, like, Idle Springs and all that. But I, I really like what they've done to the design and Reignited. So, um... Yeah, I'm interested to see what they do at the other levels. Yeah, but our goal is to hopefully get this playthrough um, recorded and uploaded before Reignited comes out. Because uh, when that does come out, I do want to stream my first playthrough of the games. Kind of like I did with Crash, but at a slower slower pace. Because considering how much longer these games are compared to Crash, I don't... <laughs> I don't want to have to play, uh, like, stream it every, every day like I did with Crash, because that can get tiring. Yeah. 
suppose I might look the other way if I was distracted by counting gems. Ooh, yes, precious, precious gems. Well, precious. Spyro, you may <laughs> lose the bell. My precious. You wish. Best of luck on your little egg hunt. Yeah, but um. The second game was like a massive improvement in terms of just the visuals and stuff because like when you look back, look, look back at the first game it, the environments were very barren and um, there wasn't really a lot to look at. Uh, Spyro 2 made the worlds feel more alive, there's like actual characters living in them and I think Spyro 3 even looks be like, better personally. Like there's, I think there's even more detail here. Um, I don't think I, d I don't necessarily think the Forgotten Worlds, like, uh, like uh, as as like a world, I think Avala is overall more interesting, but I do like the Forgotten Worlds, and like, as far as environments go, I think they're really nice to look at, especially for, like, PS1. It's probably, this is probably one of the best looking PS1 games, overall. Yeah, this game came out after the PS2 had already launched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when did this come out? Like... October, November of 2000. Okay. This was actually the first Spyro game I ever saw. Hmm. Like, I remember Hunter and Spyro, I remember Hunter getting stomped down a hole. Yay. Also, the, the the eggs are really resilient, uh, as you you'll see with some things that happen to them. Henry. Oh yeah, uh, don't don't uh, don't freak out after that point. By the way, uh, your controls will always lock up for some reason. Alright, so before we, like, handle the actual goal here, let's just clean this place up. Uh, so, um, I guess since we're in a s sub section, I guess, uh, do you have any other uh, thoughts uh, about, like, the just the minigames being separate areas or anything like that? I'm okay with that for the sake of keeping the levels less cluttered. Yeah. Hmm? I know Spyro has a very kind of a faded color palette himself. Yeah, yeah. Compared to his official art, compared to his official art, he looks more like he looks like Ridley in Smash Ultimate, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> kinda. I think we're good. Our sun has gone out. We can make a new one with our lava fusion cauldron and three sun seeds, but they keep burning up before we can get them in the pot. Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is a pretty easy. Uh, challenge but it's it's a fun little um it's a fun little uh, uh mini game i guess we have to keep on flaming these these sun seeds uh and you have to be quick otherwise they just dry up i guess uh and yeah i don't know it's, it's a fun little thing I can't wait to see how the baby dragons look in, in Reignide. Because, like, the way they're doing the dragons in the in the first game is, um... E each dragon has a unique design. So... It'd be interesting how they transfer that to the baby dragons, if they do. 
five portions get reunited. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lulu. Have you guys seriously not seen any eggs before? Yeah, seriously. Alright. I, I usually uh, mistake that whirlwind to be a regular whirlwind that will like make me fly. Like a new place? Like... Not like, a new place, but like a place that won't take you to another mini game. Yeah, it, it, I, I, I keep it like thinking it'll just make me fly, like, fly over somewhere. And we have. And, uh, yeah, returning from Spyro 1 and 2 are thieves. Yeah. Well, Spyro well, 1 comic. specifically, because uh, Spyro 2's thieves, like, were, had different designs. But yeah, they, they brought back the OG thieves, which. They're, like, one of the most iconic things about the Spyro Trilogy, so... I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is the first level where it really becomes easy to miss a gem, I find, so... Helps to be furrow. I am a little bit worried in... With Reignited, like, considering how... Better the graphics and stuff will be, I... I'm a little bit worried that the gems will be, like... Hidden under, like, the grass and stuff more, because... Um... Well... With these games, like, the... You have, like, the flat textures and stuff that makes it really easy to see the gems in the environment whereas in reignite you have like realistic textures and stuff um so i'm a little bit worried that um it'll be a bit harder to see uh, some of the gems i don't know <laughs> Oh, okay. Do you work this duty? It fell out of the belt. Oh. So, um... There's a... There's a little bit of interesting trivia when it comes to this game. Uh... Considering it like the the whole point is like is Year of the Dragon, um, they actually wanted to release this game on the actual year Year of the Dragon, um, which ended up making it a, a little bit rushed. Uh, and like we were talking about earlier, it caused some it caused the original game to be a little bit buggy and have some general issues here and there. So yeah. Interest, interesting little tidbit. It might be. It might. Oh, what the hell? Hello. Hello. Uh, what happened though? Sorry. And the cut out the video was starting to lag. Uh, and the audio was starting to get scratchy. Uh, okay. Alright, folks. Sorry, Harry. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but I was gonna say, like, is. Is it too early to ask if, uh, where you rank this, um, in the trilogy, or, like, do you want to say it now, or do you want to wait? Um, let's just wait till the end. I feel like we, 
we just Gus ripped those Rages placed in the trilogy so much before we were finished that it got in. I uh, ran out of stuff to say at the end. Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. Rainbow! <laughs> and this should be the last few gems. Okay, good. I was worried. And so far, we're doing good. And we've got two more regular levels, I think. So yeah, the the there's a four home worlds in this game, I th I believe. Um, and there's yeah. yeah, and there's a lot less levels, um, in them compared to a Spyro Two home world. So they don't go by it nearly as long. The Tiki Lodge. Now this is the the first instance of uh, backtracking that you're gonna have to do. Um, but again, because of the way the game the levels are designed in this game, um, it's not as big of an issue. And, uh, fun little fact, this level is actually where, um, Ripto finds Gulp, I think? Ap um, according to Spyro 4, anyway. <laughs> Wait, what now? Uh, in Spyro 4, um, uh, this level's called Molten Crayer, right? Yeah, Molten Crayer. Yeah, it, in the intro to Spyro 4, um, Ripto's like, <laughs> you, like, if you, if you keep thinking, I will send you back to the place I found you, begging, like, oh my goodness, like, unemployed in Molten Crater, begging for work from Nasty Nork, uh, so, yeah, according to Spyro 4, this is where Ripto meets, uh, Gold, which is interesting. I mean, it's also into the dragonfly, so take that as you will. I do appreciate that they actually have some kind of continuity, though. Like they name drop a, f they full on name drop this level, which is, which is cool. I like, I like little, like cool, like callbacks like that. It's appreciated. That was a jank hitbox if I've ever seen it. Right now the footage for me is like a slideshow presentation. Really? Is it really that bad? Yeah, well, it's like one of those clicker goggles you get. It just kind of cycle through photos. Ha! <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. I'm not sure if there's anything I can do about that. Probably on my end. I'll uh, restart this screen share if, if that'll help. I think it actually is slow. I think it's slow. I think it stabilized briefly before you did it. Oh, haha. <laughs> what does it look like right now? Uh. Uh. Still going slide some slideshow presentation. Oh, is it really? Just... I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Uh, do you have anything running? Word in Google Chrome. Uh, see, try try closing Google Chrome and see if it helps at anything. Oh wait, it's stabilized. Oh, cool. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. Oh well. Man. Oh, that. Enemy is like giving me a tough time for some reason. Sparrow isn't <laughs> yeah. Sparrow isn't usually known for um having 
uh, d tough enemies, so it's, yeah. The enemies are probably the deadliest in Spyro 1, if I, if I had to be honest. Probably, it doesn't help that you had level limited skill set back then. Yeah. Well, the main objective went to fight fast. Yeah. Yeah, this is a really short level. No. Yeah. There, there, there are, like, ways to glitch through these areas and stuff, but I'm no glitch expert, so I'm not gonna bother. That picture was a KDD. Yeah. Uh. Spyro, you're just in time. I saw two egg thieves run through this door. Well, actually, they paid me to guard their hideout, but uh, that's irrelevant. I'll happily put you through the gate to chase them down for <clears throat> a small finder's fee. Man. Probably a one-time sound kind of sincere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to get that out of the way. I always forget. Sound from the underworld. Yeah. <laughs> So I hope we can find some fodder, because... I don't know why, I just find it amusing that we actually got to see the thieves being, like, employed by the sorceress at the start. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I kind of thought they kind of stole life just for fun. Yeah. How did... There's really no fodder in this area. That's unfortunate. I'm not seeing any. Actually, it doesn't. It shouldn't matter because I can actually get a, a skill point around her somewhere. Uh, this, this is where it is. Yay! <laughs> so you don't you, you don't actually need to do that to uh, get like a collectible or anything. It's literally just there for a life and a skill point. But you know, it's I kind of like that. In a sense, like the the fact that the skill point is uh, literally just a curiosity thing, like it looks like a breakable wall, and then you yeah skill point. So you know, and quite a few of the skill points in this game you get from just uh, kind of experimenting a little bit and trying to go to more out of the reach areas. So, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Oh. That's cute. Hey, there goes another one. He was really fast. Maybe if I activate the supercharge, you'll be able to catch him. Don't know why I didn't activate it before, but alright. Alright then. All right, Right, All these eggs, and I wonder if any of them are Spyro siblings. I mean, maybe. You don't even know who his parents are. No. I think one of the early manuals was implied that he kind of found abandoned with sparks near him. Hmm. I mean, isn't that what basically happens in Legend of Spyro? Like, he kind of gets sent off and lives with uh, Sparks and uh, Sparks' family or whatever. <laughs> and he somehow thinks that he's a dragonfly. I uh, think so, I never played Legend of Spyro. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, I've seen like some cutscenes. Yeah, we can't finish this level until later. So we're just gonna get this chest and then, move, and then leave. Is that a breakable wall? Uh, well, this? No. Nope. No. There's quite a lot of breakable walls in this game, actually. 
especially with, when uh, with uh, as far as Sheila's concerned. 